Back in 2014, Roy Hibbert was one of the best defenders in the league. A 7'2", 270-pound beast was a nightmare matchup for everyone coming into the paint. He was the runner-up for the 2013-14 Defensive Player of the Year award and was an all-star the same year. 2014 was probably the peak of his career, but just a couple of years later, he was already out of the league. Hey guys, Purple Prince here, and today I wanted to tell you about the career of Roy Hibbert and where is he now? Even though introduced to basketball in early childhood, Roy Hibbert was first widely recognized for his basketball skills during his college days in Georgetown. His first season was slow, but as the years went on, he became the starter on his team and was regularly playing around 25 minutes per game. He was never a high volume scorer, as in his best year he attempted only 8.6 field goals per game. He was there for rebounding and defense. In four years of college, Hibbert averaged 10.9 points, 5.9 rebounds and 1.9 blocks per game. Going into the 2008 NBA draft, the main concerns were his conditioning and athleticism. His conditioning was obviously questioned because he never averaged more than 26 minutes per game. And while he had a super big frame, he was never really that athletic. I mean, his nickname in college was the Big Stiff, so there you go. With all that in mind, Hibbert was drafted with the number 17 pick by the Toronto Raptors, but just a couple of weeks later, his rights were traded to the Indiana Pacers. In his very first NBA game, Roy Hibbert scored two points making one of his two field goal attempts and blocked one shot in 6 minutes and 13 seconds of game time. Hibbert played sparingly and was coming off the bench for the first part of his rookie season. He did carve out a starting role and more playing time for the second part of the season and had some strong games for the Pacers. Surprisingly though, he didn't have a single double-digit rebounding game his whole rookie year. Hibbert finished his rookie season averaging 7.1 points and 3.5 rebounds in 14.4 minutes per game. From that point on, he was the designated starting center for the Indiana Pacers squad. In his second season, he improved quite a bit. With added playing time and opportunities, he scored more points, grabbed more rebounds and finally had some double-digit rebound games. He continued to improve all the way, including his best season in 2012, when he became an NBA All-Star for the first time. When you look back at his career now, the 2011-2012 season probably was the best season of his career. He averaged a career-high 12.8 points and 8.8 rebounds per game. After his best season yet, Roy Hibbert resigned with the Pacers on a 4-year $58 million contract, and he awarded them with two more strong seasons, although his downfall had already started. He was just too slow, too unathletic. He still averaged double-digit points, but his rebounds and efficiency fell down. He couldn't space the floor and couldn't keep up with the modern bigs more athletic and much faster than him. The 2014 postseason run was probably his worst. He became an all-star for the second time in his career during the 2013-14 season, but by the end of the regular season he regressed so hard. During Indiana's postseason run, he had four scoreless games. In 19 playoff games, he had just two double-digit rebound games, four steals in total. In the first round series against Atlanta, he had two scoreless games and a field goal percentage of 37.2%. He sort of rebounded back to his form in the next series against Washington, having four double-digit point games and improving his field goal percentage, but in the Eastern Conference Finals against Miami, he once again slipped back to mediocrity. In 34.7 minutes per game, he averaged just 10.8 points and 7.7 rebounds on 41.5% shooting from the field. Against a team that really had no bigs, he was supposed to dominate, but instead, he flopped. He spent one more year with the Pacers, averaging his regular 10-7, and 7, but soon enough the Pacers started to realize that he is just a statue in the middle, not really delivering anything on the offensive end or defense. His seventh season run with the Pacers ended on July 9, 2015, when Hibbert was traded to the Los Angeles Lakers for a second round pick in the 2019 NBA Draft. Even though he started all 81 games he played for the Lakers, Hibbert's stats dipped even further. He averaged a career low 5.9 points and 4.9 rebounds for them. In the summer of 2016, Hibbert signed with the Charlotte Hornets, who needed some big man depth. He was okay, as in his 16 minutes per game, he averaged 5.2 points and 3.6 rebounds. But in search for better players, Hornets traded him to the Milwaukee Bucks for Miles Plumlee. 
he didn't play a game for the Bucks and was traded once again to the Denver Nuggets. In Denver, he appeared in just 6 games and played a total of just 11 minutes. His career was over. Roy Hibbert officially announced his retirement on July 17, 2018. In total, his NBA career lasted 662 games and his averages were 24.8 minutes, 10 points, 6.3 rebounds and 1.7 blocks. In a way, Hibbert's downfall was because of bad timing. From Defensive Player of the Year talks to being out of the league in just a few years. From LeBron stopper to being a liability to his own team. The league just changed. More and more you saw 3-point shooting big men. Hibbert never did that. He attempted just 24 3-pointers during his whole career. He couldn't guard big men on the perimeter, he just wasn't quick enough. So in a way, the league abandoned him and his skill set. But where is he now? He's doing good. In the summer of 2019, Hibbert was hired by the Philadelphia 76ers to a player development coaching role. He's also been quite a voice when it comes to making the NBA more popular in other countries, like India for example. He's an ambassador of basketball. There's a very large population here that loves basketball. You guys have dedicated fans. I'm not sure what time most games come on, I assume it's either late at night or early in the morning, but when you have a fan base like that, you have to make sure you pay attention to them because they are consuming the product so well. I'm hoping to get selected to go to India when the pandemic is over and give what I have to the kids. NBA wants to tap the Indian market. I'm not sure if they have any NBA facilities for the future, but I assume that is on Adam Silver's mind once the pandemic slows down. So there you go guys, Roy Hibbert, still close to basketball in every way possible. What do you think was the reason for his sudden downfall? The game involving or him just not being able to adapt? Whatever your thought is, please leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like the video for Roy Hibbert. Subscribe to the channel and enable bell notifications to get notified when I upload. Thanks. This is Purple Prince and I'm out.